Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. So just wanted to give another update on the truck. Try to stay out of the wind. I did a whole bunch of stuff to it and um, I didn't exactly do a great job at videoing process. So I'm doing it now, showing you guys what what done so far and uh, what I'm currently doing and um, kind of where we're going with it. And it's gonna be pretty cool. So check this out. The first thing is clearly I got a topper. This is an ARE MX series topper. You can see there it's actually really big. So it looks odd on the truck, I will say. It looks like a big tumor on it. Let me give a walk around. So yeah, there's the topper, which I actually, I like it cause it's, um, it's really big and it gives like a whole bunch of room in the bed, which I will show you in a second. But the other thing is these, uh, I got these NFAB steps and these were a really, really good price on Amazon. They're the glossy ones, which clearly don't match all that well, but. They were only like 188 and that is a really good price for these things and that was shipped on amazon prime so i just had to i just had to go with these i figured if i really didn't like the the color or the texture i could just repaint them if i wanted to but they actually don't bother me i think they look fine um and they do help get into the car of course i, I don't really need them but they help the kids and everybody so they're a good thing truck has steps now I think it really it helps it look better. I think it kind of like completes it a little bit more, um, especially with the topper on there. It just kind of like, you know, goes with the look where it doesn't really look as lame as uh, steps usually look on trucks. Cause I usually like the look of no steps, which is why I like those ARE folding ones. But those things are like 1400 bucks. So clearly I don't really want to spend that kind of cash. So let me show you the topper here. So you can see the other thing I got is a bed rug and this bed rug is awesome. Um, wish I could show you a little bit more, but it's basically like a carpeted rug and it's um, all weather, all um, like you can put sand in here and dirt. It's like, it's like durable. It's, it's med me meant to like replace like a bed liner. Um, except it's just like a carpeting surface so it's outdoor and all that so it basically allowed me to allows it to like have like a comfortable comfortable carpeted interior kind of like a car and then also the the cap is carpeted on the inside and it has a little light so it's um it's really big so the openings come inside because it has that bubble on it it has like a massive opening to get inside which is really nice because, you know, I was looking for maximum versatility more so than like it looking cool because toppers never really look cool. But in this particular, on this particular truck, I don't think it looks all that bad. It like goes with the look and I feel like it matches with the rims and everything really well. So you guys tell me what you think, but I'm pretty happy with it. So the other things that were going on with the truck, one thing I mentioned is that the truck didn't have a, an inverter. So some of the upper level trims of those trucks and all of the trucks, they come with an inverter, like a little 400 watt or something like that. And I just figured I would do my own inverter. So that's what I was working on. So in, in addition to the inverter, I wanted a, a battery powered system so I can run like a little refrigerator and other stuff like that in the truck. And um, so that's what I've been working on. So let me show you here. This is the little fridge I got. It's got some weird name by a weird company, but it had decent ratings on Amazon. Um, 
I'll put all the specs on the screen because I don't really recall, but I've been testing with it and it seems to work pretty good. Stuff's nice and cold, 35 degrees. I played with it freezing stuff. It'll freeze stuff. Um, it uses a ton of battery to freeze stuff. So I think it works better as just like a normal, you know, freezer of stuff that's already cold. Not really like freezing something from scratch unless you got the battery power to do it. But um, I have it just as a refrigerator and that's all I'm going to really want it for. So you can see it's 37 degrees. Pretty cool. And it's running off of DC into this little battery box that I made. Okay, so this is the inside of my little battery box. Um, I got all the stuff needed to do this on Amazon. So I'll post the links. And um, it's all pretty simple, actually. There's no, not really anything overly complex. So I have three of my um, Li-Led lithium batteries. Each battery is about 30 amp hours of lithium power. So, of course, that means that you can drain them down all the way and charge them up all the way, and that's great. And the reason why I went with these expensive batteries um, was because these, as we know, can handle the temperatures. Because I live in Houston, I needed everything here was with temperature in mind. So there weren't any other lithium batteries that I know of that can handle the Houston temperatures. So I went with these guys because I know they can handle the temperatures here no matter what. Um, so if it gets 150 degrees in the back where this is, that's going to be fine. Everything can handle that temp. So that's all good. And you see I have these 12 volts wired up here. And this is what I have the fridge plugged into. The fridge runs, runs off of 12 volt. And you can see I have that all wired directly to this side of the battery uh, of this um, fuse to uh, this little eight gauge, uh, I think this is a 80 amp fuse or something like that. So it just goes directly right there. So I just have it du double fuse just in case and because it's all in the battery box and since there's so much um, power going on in here, I just wanna make sure if anything breaks off, anything happens, there's a fuse on fuse racks on racks um, just to make sure everything stays safe so and then I have another box in here just to isolate this battery from the from the others and um, once I add all the stuff everything will be like pushed down and secure it's not completely done yet so I have this coming all the batteries wired together in um, I guess parallel I guess it's called so just all acting as one battery you can see the negatives go to the negatives, the positives go to the posit positives, all using this zero zero gauge wire. Goes to this 100 amp fuse. 100 amps might be a little bit low because this system could draw a whole, whole lot more than 100 amps, but I don't plan on drawing more than 100 amps from it, so I don't need a fuse that's stronger than what I need right now. If I blow this fuse, then I have a stronger one I can put up. I just would rather it safer um, for now. And if I blow the fuse, then I'll deal with it from there. So it goes to this zero, zero gauge wire. And then that brings us to the lid. And let me put the lid on and I'll show you how that works. Okay, so um, this wire comes out of the battery and that's of course on a 100 amp fuse. So this goes, will connect to this little bus bar right here. And then the negative will attach to, ah, obviously it has power going through it. So um, yeah, it sparked, scared me. Um, yeah, so the negative attaches right here. All it's doing is charging the inverter, so it's not a lot of power. It just scares me. This is a Thor 1000 watt inverter, pure sine wave. I wanted to go with the pure sine wave just because if I wanted to run like electronics and stuff, didn't want to have to deal with it. And since I'm getting my own inverter, I went with that. And this Thor is like a commercial grade inverter. That's why it's massive, even though it's a thousand watts. Um, so it does have a surge rating of 2000 watts, so it can actually run a two, a true 1000 watt and with my wiring set up, that wouldn't be an issue either. But this one is, is, is uh, meant for like high heat environments, like mobile, like it's all meant for this type of thing. So again, it'll work in the heat and it has cooling fans and everything. And again, that's, that's one of my primary concerns is this thing needs to be able to work if it's like 130 degrees underneath the sun and underneath my cap. Um, and not overheat. So I need a bit of a buffer. So that's how all this goes together. This of course bolts down here, this bolts there. And then um, 
there's a fuse connection going to the inverter here and then of course the negative goes there all pretty simple then from this box then the box will go into the cab of the truck and as you can see i drilled out a section of the bed to fit these two wires this is zero 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 gauge wire I haven't completed completed this part because I need a crimper because uh, you need a uh, special tools for that so I need that special hammer crimper thing and I don't have one I ordered one but it's not here yet so as soon as that gets here I'll put terminals on this and this of course goes to the front of the truck let me show you there and then under the hood here the other portion of this um, 000 gauge wi wire, or I guess it's 40 gauge, I don't know how to say that. Someone could tell me 40, 40 gauge. It's not 40 gauge, uh, 40 gauge, 000 gauge, I don't know. And then of course I put a lithium battery in the truck and it works great in here. So this will connect to here using this cool um, Vicron smart battery protect. And this is basically just like a battery isolator, but this one you can connect to it through Bluetooth and set specific voltages to isolate at. And because I'm using lithium, so the voltages are a lot higher than a normal battery would be, I needed to I needed this because I can program it to shut off at like 13.2 volts rather than all the off just off the shelf stuff will do it at like 12 when the lithium batteries are like pretty much dead already because um, they hold more voltage. So anyway kind of kind of geeky here but this is uh that's why i had to go with this Vic vicron one and i went with the 220 amp one because it was just a little bit more than the le lesser one so why why not have more power and so with the battery running the cables running here i'll be able to like hook up like a winch and that sort of like high power stuff and it'll be able to run off the battery bank um so yeah then i'm going to be able to run some 12 volt into the inter interior that's going to run off the battery bank as well um yeah, should be pretty cool. And um, inside the truck, this will go mounted to the front. Of course, it'll be all fused up. Kind of long-winded and I just probably showed a crap ton of stuff really quickly, but since I'm installing it all, this is like the only opportunity I can show it like outside of the, the car because otherwise it'll just be all done. So hopefully that was like a quick little tutorial of what I'm doing. Um, I didn't get it all on video just because um, it doesn't really, the install process doesn't really matter all that much. Either you know how to do this kind of install or you don't. It's really easy. It's all really easy. Um, what matters is like what components I use and stuff. And I'll link to all that um, just in case anyone's curious or wants to um, do something like this themselves. But um, I think it's going to be pretty cool. I, the reason why I went with the setup like this is I want, you know, it's my doomsday prep truck. And I want to be able to... You know, I want to have mobile power. Like if the power goes out, I want to be able to connect to my truck and power some stuff if I needed to for camping, road trips. I mean, there's a million different reasons why it's nice to have like some mobile power. And um, because I'm in Houston, it just presents those unique challenges of creating mobile power. And I didn't want to get a whole bunch of AGM batteries that would, you know, weigh 300 pounds or something like that. I just didn't want to go with all that. So, you know, I love lithium, I love technology, so. Mine's uh, the, the retro tech nerd version of a dual battery system. So anyway, that's it for now. Of course, next video it'll all be installed, but uh, hopefully it'll all work out well. If anyone sees anything or has any suggestions on what I did, anything I did wrong, let me know. I know what I'm doing mostly, but who knows? I, you know, everybody messes up. Peace.